Let's take a look at how to build assemblies now. For starters, we could always go over here and create a new. Open up an assembly. We can also go to advanced if we have various templates. I'm going to go ahead and click this novice again. For now, we'll go ahead and just click assembly. And we can go ahead and start creating an assembly by importing in documents of various parts. And we can drag them in if we needed to. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that in just a bit. But right now, I'm not going to go ahead and do it this way. For starters, I'm going to go ahead and close this. We can go ahead and open up a new file. We have this in our hinge folder and the project folders. We can open up an existing assembly. I'll go ahead and do that for just a second. As you can see, we opened up this assembly. This is the one that we're going to actually work with in this lesson. We're going to put in each of these components and actually look at configurations as well and build this assembly. I'm going to go ahead and close this out again. For starters, let's open up one of the parts. Let's open up this hinge, for example. As you can see, we just have a simple hinge. We are in a part. We can't drag and move this around like you saw in a previous video, how I was moving it around. Let's go ahead and go to file and we can make assembly from part. That will go ahead and bring us to this dialog box over here, which looks almost exactly the same. As you can see, we have our hinge on this left hand side and all we have to really do is click on it and place it into our assembly. And that will be our first part placed in here. And since it is our first part, it has this F over here, meaning it is the fixed part into this assembly. So everything else will move with relation to this part here. We can go ahead and open up another part. We'll open up this pin here. And the other thing what we can do is if we were to go to window and we can tile this vertically or horizontally, I'll go ahead and click vertically for now. I'll close out these side left tabs just so we can get a better view. As you can see, we have our assembly here. We have our hinge here and we have our pin right here. So this part we already added, they're the same parts right now. What we can do is grab this part and just drag it into our assembly. So now we have two parts in here. We can always left click, move it around to adjust it. Or if we were to right click on the part, we can go ahead and rotate it around. So for now, we can go ahead and just place it kind of somewhere where it needs to be. It doesn't need to be anywhere perfect. Kind of going through my part there a little bit, but that's okay because we're going to look at how to adjust that a little bit better right now. We're just putting it in the general location. We can go ahead and just move it off to the side as well. Now we need to actually create the two parts of this hinge. So let's look a little more at this one. I'm going to go ahead and open this up open up this side panel on the left and currently we're under configurations so we have three configurations right now we have the outer cuts the inner cuts and the default we're gonna go ahead and select the inner cuts and notice now we have these two cuts in the inside as opposed to these three cuts that we already dragged in so we'll go ahead and change that like that like so we'll go back to window we can tile them either way that we need to we can also hold down Control and hit tab to look at our other previous documents that we have open. We can jump to our pin. We can jump back to our hinge that we're looking at, just so you know. So this time, let's go ahead and try to tile horizontally to see what that looks like. There you go. So here's our bottom assembly here. We have assembly on the left. We got our pin and we have our hinge. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this and we're going to bring it down. And now we have all three of our parts in there. Now, if we were to come into this part and make any adjustments, we could always go ahead and hit this rebuild button here and it's going to rebuild the assembly and the assembly is going to be linked to these files. So it's going to know any modifications that you make to these files here. So since we're currently going to be working on this assembly here, we'll go ahead and open that up. As you can see, these have two minuses because they're currently not completely defined and fixed. So we can not drag this one around. We can drag this one. This one's the one that's fixed down. We can drag that around still. We can rotate it like so, just so you have an idea. Look at it from different views. So what we're gonna do is we need to connect all three of these parts together because that's the whole purpose of having an assembly. Putting together each of your parts and looking at how they interact with one another. So the first thing we can do is we can attach this pin to this portion of the hinge here or we can attach this pin to this portion of the hinge over here and then attach the other hinge so you can really build it in any way you want and it's up to you to decide how you want to build it but depending the way you 
are going to construct your parts and the way you construct your assemblies depends upon you and how you're going to want them to react to one another. So we can, for starters, go ahead and learn how to mate. Up here in the top left corner, we have mate. We could go ahead and select this and we have just like in our sketches, we can apply various mates and constraints to these parts here. Or we could go ahead and start selecting, holding down control and applying the mates that way. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and just stick with a standard mate. And I'll show you how to do the other way in just a second. So for starters, let's go ahead and try to mate this edge here with this edge here because we're going to want them to line up. So we can go ahead and select one, select two. As you can see, it already automatically lines up for us. Let's just go ahead and accept that for now and see what happens as I drag this around. It stays pretty lined up just like we need it to be. You can see, I can't really move it out of place. So we can drag it into right there is where we're going to kind of need it to be. But we can move it around for just a second. But also notice that these hinges are actually not lined up the way we want them to be. So that might be a common thing you do. You might create some mates and after further looking at your design, you realize you may have applied the wrong mates. Because as you can see, we have an empty space here and the space here. They basically have the same orientation looking in the same direction. So one of these we have to flip around. So we can go ahead and delete one of these mates here. Or we can see in this tree down here, we have all the current mates. We can go ahead and highlight one of those and just delete it out. We could always rotate our part around just to get a better view. Or if it was rotated the other way, we could go ahead and apply mates. Click one side here. And since I already had the other side selected, we could just rotate around to select the size that we needed. I'll go ahead and make sure nothing is selected. Select the mate, grab one side, rotate this around, grab the other side. As you can see, it mates it again. But also note that that isn't actually the way we want it to be mated. So if you run into this predicament, we can use this dialog box here. We can select this, flip mate alignment and that's the actual way we want it to be aligned so we can go ahead and accept that and now as you can see we have the mate on the left side so our dialog box is still open for us to make more selections now we just got to think about what other ways we can mate all this together well for one thing this pin is going to go through these shafts here so we can go ahead and select this outer edge and we can select one of these inner edges and that will line that up. We can go ahead and accept that. And then we can continue and do it to the other hinge as well. We can select that edge there and select this edge here and that will line it up. We'll go ahead and accept that and we'll just exit out of the mates. So currently everything is lined up to the way it needs to be. Except I think I may be able to grab this pin here and pull it in and out. So we lined up these hinges. We can go ahead and grab them and move them. They're constrained to the mates that we applied, but this hinge, I mean this pin, will still fly through the hinge. So we just need to come up with constraints for this as well. So one easy way to do this is to decide either if we want to mate this bottom edge to this edge here, or we can mate the top of the pin. If I can grab it, the bottom of this pin here, this surface to the top of this surface here. And that's what I'm going to choose for this mate. So I'll go ahead and apply a mate. I'll come in a little bit. I'll select this surface here. I'll rotate and select that surface there. And I will accept that and accept that mate. And now we have everything pinned down the way we want it to be. So that will be our hinge. Now currently it flies through. And if you want to see what it would look like if it did not fly through, we can always go to move components here. We can select collision detection and make sure we got stop at collision. So as we move it around, it will be confined to just that area there. I'll go ahead and hit OK for now. An important thing to also remember is we can always select these parts here from this tree. And we can always make any edits and adjustments as long as you make sure to rebuild. We already looked at configurations and we pulled out two various configurations of this hinge and dragged them into the assembly. We can always insert more assemblies. I mean, 
we can also insert subassemblies if we need to as well as parts. We can also apply linear patterns like we did before in previous courses. And we have additional geometry to aid us in lining up these parts if we needed to. So for example, if we didn't have a face or an axis to line things up to correctly, we can create them if we needed to. But depending how you create your mates, just like in the sketches with the relations will dictate how your part or assembly will react to changes.